Hello everybody and welcome into the Yellowstone Yams Dynasty here on College Football 25. We are back for the final episode of Season 1 as we are not bowl eligible, no postseason in sight for us, but we get to go on the road, face our biggest rival in Boise State, and try to knock them back down to 500. Despite not getting to the postseason, I do think Season 1 for the Yams has been a major success. We've gotten a couple big time wins, we have a couple of upsets, and I feel like we've been largely competitive in most of these games. So for Boise State, they're 5-4, five 5-2 and five and in conference, currently in a position for the conference championship. However, the weird thing is they only have 11 games on the schedule, so if we can beat them this week, they may miss out on a bowl game. Boise State is a 2.5 star school, 81 overall, definitely one of the hardest teams on the schedule. Their quarterback is a redshirt freshman, Malachi Nelson. I believe he was committed to USC for a while, but great speed. But he's still a field general, so he has good throw power and accuracy as well. The Broncos also have one of the best running backs in the country, Ashton Jeedy. They're also insanely deep at wide receiver, all 78 overall. You got Austin Bolt, Cam Camper, Latrell Caples, and Prince Strachan. Now the Yams have had some trouble against tight ends, so Lautner, 83 overall, definitely got to stop him today. And yeah, folks, as I look at this offensive line, I think we're in for another shootout this week as I don't see the Yams stopping these guys whatsoever. And looking at this defense, man, we might be cooked. This may be a quick episode as elite edge rushers in the middle. You got Herbert Gums, what a name. At linebacker, maybe a little bit more what we're used to facing uh, but as you go to the corners you've got McCoy, Irby, and Reed all very capable corners and in the back you got Oladipo and Tubner. Here we go we are at Boise State our rivalry game rivalry week the last game of the regular season. I cannot wait we've had this one circled all season long and here comes the Boise State Broncos with a sledgehammer of all things. All right, in the AMSO, we got a surprise for you today as we are debuting the Blood Wolf Alternates, baby. My favorite jersey combo out here. We're going to wear them one time a year. They're very special, so we're hoping we can get a win with them. We'll see what happens, but we will be kicking it off first as Boise State returns it here. They are going to bring it out up, oh, and they get to about the 19, so... Here comes Boise State to start it. Matt Lautner, we've had a lot of trouble with tight ends recently. Hopefully we can contain him today. The Malachi Nelson here. This going to be a very talented team. He hands it off to GD and Flanagan gets the opening tackle. Now an opening third down, man in motion. Nelson snaps it, has time, throws it deep and big hit by Henley, knocks it out. So that will be... A three and out. Here comes Fox. And look at the close-up of those jerseys, baby. Hopefully it elevates our play here as we throw it. No, it's intercepted! They're going the other way. A pick six to open the game for Leon Fox. His final game as a yam, and he wouldn't do it any other way. He gives them a free touchdown. Unreal. As we get the replay here, he looked open. I mean, we've ran this play a million times and he just lofted it out there a little bit too much great job by Rodney Robinson to stay on his feet and get him seven so back onto the field here we hand it to Spurlock he's going to power forward for nine earn one now we bring out the split T hand it off to Sean Martin and he gets the first so now out empty we're already cold with Fox over the middle and that's going to be Mixon his first catch of the day gets another first now at midfield, we're going to hand it off to Spurlock, who breaks a tackle. There he goes. He bursts away inside the 20 and pushed out at the 10. So now first and 10 inside the 20. Throw it out to Jerome Neal, who's going to power forward inside the 5. So split T time, and you know what it is. Touchdown, Sean Martin. He gets into the end zone. The Yams are back in it. What a response as he throws out a Heisman pose. All right, buddy. Now they'll hand it to GD, and nice tackle there by Rhett Bush coming on last couple of weeks. 
And then to the right side, there he goes. That's going to be close to a first down. It will be third and one. So they're going to throw a quick throw, and that is a catch by Bolt on the slant. Third and four yet again at midfield. They're going to low snap, hand it off to GD, and he powers to the right-hand side, and a big gain. He's going to... He's going to get his yards. We just got to contain him here as he cuts up field yet again, and that's going to be another big one. Second and six now for the Broncos. Knocking on the doorstep. They hand this to Dubar, the backup running back. Third and eight now for Nelson. He's going to throw it. Four-man rush has time, and he just dumps his short, and that's going to be an easy tackle for Gutierrez. So they'll bring out the field goal unit. 32 yards to take the lead, and the Broncos hit it. 10-7 here in the first half. So the Yams are back on the field now as they are going to throw the RPO yet again. Stick into the game plan, I see. Second and six now. We're going to give it to Tyrone Easley. We normally don't see him on these jet sweeps. It works out, but we got a flag. Looks like it might be holding. And it is. So move the Yams on back. Second and 10, last play of the first quarter. Fox is going to take off. He tries to turn it, and no, he's brought down. And remember, guys, we are at the point in the season where wear and tear takes a massive toll, so those hits add up as Aaron Spurlock having a great quarter. So third and 10 now for Fox. Over the middle, hits his man. It's Jerome Neal, and they're going to mark him fourth in inches. But this is rivalry week. We don't have a postseason to go to. This is the postseason. We're going to go for it. Hands it to Sean Martin. You know what it is. First down, Yellowstone. So second and 10 now. Drive continues. Fox, he gets sacked. Knew this was going to be a problem here today. But third and 16, we're hit again. And that's going to be a punt this time. So out comes Boise with the lead, 10-7, and now GD, he gets his room to run. Oh boy, please somebody stop this man as he gets another carry. He finds the seam, and he gets another big chunk. First and 10 now. Crazy formation there with like three tight ends, and nice play by Jordan Anderson to stop him. Third and seven now. Weird snap. It's going to be a screen pass, and he gets the first down inside the 40. Third and two, though, for the Broncos. Another handoff this time. Dubas, and oh, no, he juked out Flanagan. Please. And they save it, but, man, you don't often see A.J. Flanagan miss a tackle. So first and goal now as Jed Patrick takes down Nelson. Never a chance there. Second and goal now. Flanagan's not going to miss this one. Third in goal, trying to get off the field, keep it at a one-score game. It's going to be a throw. He hits his man, and they knock it out. Lamar Lanes. So field goal unit comes back out. Easy one here. 13-7 is the score. Yams defense coming through. Now can the offense respond? Spurlock to the outside. Cuts up field, and he'll get a first down. Two minutes left, second and seven. Fox, he tries to escape, and he goes down yet again. Broncos start calling timeouts here, third and ten. And we're going to throw that over the middle. It's Mixon, and he pushes forward for the first, so the drive can continue. Second and three, and throws that quickly to Tyrone easily, and he's open. First down. Minute 20 left here. Fox, clean pocket, and he runs out of time, but he escapes two men, and he slides. What a play from Fox. So third and three. Running out of time. He's scrambling. And he goes down yet again. Another drive squandered here. So Broncos will get another chance. So first and ten. Nothing. He just dumps it off for minimal yardage. Third and two now. 17 seconds left. Doesn't look like they're going to do much here. Nelson trying to find something. Just throws this one away as he's hit. So that'll take us to halftime, folks. It's 13 to 7. The Yams are in it. Definitely feel like there's a lot of opportunities. We just gotta run our game plan, avoid the sacks, avoid, avoid the negative plays, and we should be a-okay. -A Love the way the defense is playing. Let's see if we can build on this is Jerome Neal. He gets the first handoff. Remember, as this wear and tear builds up, we've gotta start. Giving some other guys a chance here. Now Ryan McGee gets a chance in the RPO. He gets a first down. Second and three here. Spurlock gets the carry. 
and he gets another first. Third and four. Leon over the middle yet again, and Mixon, he's been great on third down today. Beautiful drive to start it, and a quick throw out wide. That's easily another first down. Inside the red zone here, Leon. He has plenty of time. He takes off up the middle, and he slides inside the five. First and goal. Amazing drive to start it. We're going to get a jet sweep now to Mixon. He cuts a field. He pushes, and no, they'll stop him. Second and goal split T. Hand off to Sean Martin, and he goes nowhere. Third and goal split T again. Hand it off. No, it's a throw. Jerome Neal and oh, nothing. As they have an injury timeout. So decision for Chad Barber. Will he go for this? Yes, he will. Empty set. Leon snaps it. Throws. Incomplete. That was the chance. So now we got to try to get a stop. g and &E and oh, wait. The, blah, 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 that's a safety. They're not going to call the safety. Okay, I guess he's on the inch. They hand it off again and powers forward out of the end zone. Third and nine. Can the Yams get off the field here? They hand it off to GD. He hurdles and he stops short. So the Yams take over at the 40. Get another chance here. Spurlock takes the carry and he gets up to the first down marker. First and 10. It's going to be play action now. Throws it towards Fred Hart who breaks a tackle and he gets about nine. Third and two, back in the split T. Can we convert? Sean Martin, yes, sir! Let's go. First and 10. Fox has time, rolls left. He's going to take off. He cuts up field. He runs into Fred Hart, so he takes a hit. That's going to hurt him in the uh, wear and tear department, but we'll check on some of these matchups at the end of this week. A lot of action going on around the country. Second and one, though. Sean Martin open the middle. Touchdown, Yams. They take the lead. Boise State doesn't know what just hit him. Sean Martin on your dome. The Yams take the lead, baby. 14 to 13 here in the fourth. First and 10. Now Nelson throws it to Bull. I don't know how he hung on to that one. Second and two. Nelson, he hasn't thrown it much today, and elevates, and that's dropped. So third and two now. Chance to get off the field for the Ams. And a GD, no, he's going to get the first and a lot more down the right-hand side. Lamar Lanes brings him down, but he goes down. Lower back. Oh, no, their best player at the worst possible moment leaves the field. So it's going to be John Bress Dubar the rest of the way here as he spins out wide, gets one. Third and 11 now, or no, GD, I guess, is back in. Third and 11, and quick throw, and that's incomplete. Yams get the ball. Five minutes left. We have the lead. Cannot believe they stayed in this game. Only have given up six offensive points today as they throw this RPO, and that's going to be a first for Mixon, but no, there's a flag. What is the call? Another holding, this time on Tyrone easily. Back him up. Third and 14 now. Massive play here for the Ams. Fox drops back. It's his screen. Spurlock, he gets to the outside. Spurlock cuts up field. Spurlock, and they mark him short. So they're going for it again. Getting aggressive. We want to beat our rivals. We got to be undefeated with the Blood Wolf. And Sean Martin gets it. Yes, sir. Third and nine. Fox, Fox, over the middle, mix in! That's a first! We're inside two minutes now, folks. We can taste it. Spurlock! Oh my, they're using the timeouts. Third and three. We can taste it. Hands it off to Sean Martin. That's a first! One more, folks. One more conversion. Split T. Second and ten. It's Sean Martin. Can he get there? Yes, he does! Victory formation for the Yams. Triple zeros on the clock. 14-13. The Yams have done it. They've taken down Boise State on the road in the Blood Wolf uniform debut on the back of an opening play pick six by Leon Fox. You can't write a script better than that, folks.
What a game, what a day here for the Yams, and what a way to close out Season 1. Unreal game. I can't believe it. And I Shout out to the defense. Last couple of weeks, they've given up 38 points. They've given up 45 points. And then this week, they gave up 6. They were able to run the ball today. We were able to mitigate turnovers after we threw that initial one. And we completely stopped Boise State through the air. That was, the, I think, the big game changer, as well as dominating time of possession. But Nelson only completed 9 passes. JD averaged 6.8. I mean, we all we did was contain him. That's all we had to do, right? So we did our job there. Receiving, once again, just like uh, Nelson. I mean, nothing open downfield. He had to just dump it off to GED. The offensive line, uh, as always, was amazing. And their defense, man, they played well. Andrew Simpson, 16 tackles. Four TFLs here for Hassanin. He had those two sacks. And then Robinson obviously had the interception. And the pick six here for Boise State. But in their final games of their career, Leon Fox, no passing touchdowns, but he did what he needed to do. 19 of 25, some big completions down the stretch. Spurlock got 97. Sean Martin had 46 and two tutties. I had to start mixing in Sean Martin more because Spurlock was like minus 17 on some wear and tear stuff there in the fourth quarter. Um, but receiving... Everybody got involved. It was a fantastic all-hands-on-deck victory and something that, that that we could really hang our hats on for the rest of this year. There's a lot of TFLs. No sacks today but and no turnovers, but we did what we needed to do on defense as we will not get an upgrade this week. Pretty big upset here is Wake Forest beats Miami on the road. So despite beating us last week, East Carolina cannot get to bowl eligibility. Colorado takes down top-ranked Kansas. They were in the top four. And down goes Utah. Iowa State takes them out at home. Florida State loses to Memphis. What is going on? So in the Mountain West this week, Nevada takes care of Air Force. Hawaii beats Utah State. Yellowstone takes out Boise State. Mid-Tennessee State takes out New Mexico State. Temple takes care of UTSA. Tennessee destroys UTEP. And UNLV destroys San Jose State. And look at this. The Mount West is so bad. Their championship game is going to be between two 6-6 six six teams most likely. Oh dear. So your National Player of the Week this week is VJ Payne with two interceptions, a forced fumble, and two fumble recoveries. And then NIU gets on the board with Kenji Lewis. He gets over 300 total yards and four touchdowns. In the Mountain West, it was UTEP Maurice Westmerlin. We know how good he is. He got two sacks at Tennessee. And Ron Kramer for Nevada had 300 passing yards and multiple touchdowns. Not much change here in the Heisman race, but Gio Lopez and Avery Johnson make their way into the top five. And here's an updated look at the college football playoff. Alabama, Clemson, Oregon, and Kansas State get those first round buys, and Memphis is projected to get the G5 auto bid. And here's a look at the top 25 polls as we enter week 14. And we get Zach Reinbolt, the speedy linebacker from Colorado. We also add Mario Yelk, the center from Colorado as well. So nothing but good news this week. We get two commitments and a top five for Hardrick. And as we check on recruiting, we get two more commits this week. We're now up to 11 prospects. Now we only have three more battles that should wrap up here in the next couple of weeks. And despite signing two prospects, we actually drop in the rankings down to 109. Now we are going to sim past week 14 here so we can wrap up the regular season, but I'm going to save week 15 conference championships and the entire offseason for one video. And in week 14, Memphis chokes to Tulane. Texas State beats South Alabama. Charlotte bests UAB. Ohio State beats Michigan, who's now unranked. And Texas takes down number one AM. Pittsburgh dominates Boston College on the road. 
South Carolina takes down Clemson in rivalry week. And Colorado does it again, as this time they take down the Pokes. And Boise State, despite losing to us, does reach bowl eligibility. So as we look at the Mountain West, Nevada gets another win over UNLV. San Diego State beats Utah State. UTEP beats New Mexico State. Washington State beats up on New Mexico. And Stanford kills San Jose State. In the Mountain West, it's going to be UTSA and Nevada, both 6-6 six and six on the year. Now, the players of the week this week is Jaron Kanak, one sack, two forced fumbles, and four recoveries against LSU. And on offense, it's Caleb Douglas, 240 receiving yards and four touchdowns. In the Mountain West, it is Maurice Westmerlin again with two sacks against New Mexico State. And Amari White, who had 147 and three touchdowns through the air. And it looks like your finalists for the Heisman Trophy will be Connor Wegman, Jalen Milrow, Gio Lopez, Xavion Thomas, and Brett Gabbert. And the final projection before conference championships, you got Alabama, Oregon, Kansas State, and Clemson with your buys. And it looks like they have Charlotte getting that last G5 auto bid. And as I look at the top 25 here, there's definitely still some issues like Clemson being underneath USC. I mean, that just would never happen. But as far as teams making the playoff with realistic records, it does seem somewhat on point. And bang, there it is. We get Micah Avilas, the kicker of the future. So with our signing of Avilas, we now only have two players that we can go after the rest of this season because nobody else has reopened their recruiting. Remember, if you want to check out our recruiting rules, read the description below. Uh, but at the end of the regular season, we've got 12 prospects. That's pretty damn good. And with that three star, we are now ranked 99th in the country. And you know what? I will take that. We had such a bad stretch of recruiting there in the middle of the year. I'm, I'm shocked that we're in the top 120. So that's going to do it for season one here for the Yellowstone Yams. Let's go through all the stats here so that we can wrap it up. But Leon Fox, it was a very enjoyable year, very up and down. But this season with the Yams going five and seven just completely blew my expectations out of the water. And while on, on tape, he might seem like a dummy. He was so much fun to play with. I do recommend playing with him. It is enjoyable. But 2,600 yards, 18 touchdowns, 19 interceptions, 65% completion percentage. The problem here was he was sacked 43 times. And then he, by the end of the season, there's just major wear and tear. I'm actually kind of shocked he didn't miss any games. And rushing the ball, we have Spurlock. He took over that starting spot after the first couple of weeks here, and he really just took it and ran with it, averaging 5.5 a carry this year. Now, the touchdowns are down because anytime we got close to the yard marker, uh, Sean Martin just pounded it home, and Leon Fox also made some great plays near the goal line. So I was very happy with our rushing performance for the most part. Definitely um, outdid my expectations as well. And then receiving, I did expect Tyrone Easley to be good, but not nobody expected Nick Mixon to have this kind of production. Now, despite having, you know, 32 more catches than Easley, only about 90 more yards. So Easley was still a very big play receiver. I was disappointed by Fred Hart, though, this year. And Ryan McGee, I did expect him to be a little bit better. And I'm kind of shocked Chuck Sledge only had 18 catches. He was lined up as number two all season long. Now, touchdowns, it was obviously easily in Mixon that led us in that department, with our long being a 62-yard bomb. Blocking-wise, the most sacks was Tariq Williams, our left tackle. And on defense, our solo tackle leader was A.J. Flanagan. Assists was A.J. Flanagan. Tackles, A.J. Flanagan. Now, TFLs, once again, A.J. Flanagan, he dominated. And our sack leader, Jed Patrick, he just bursts onto the scene this year. I think it's largely because a lot of the right tackles aren't very good in the Mountain West. Uh, but nevertheless, very stoked about what he did. And Terry Baker, man, I wish he didn't get injured. He could have had such a better year than this. And Flanagan had three sacks himself. Now, interceptions. Lamar Lanes actually led us. Um, Bertie Jones had three. John Henley had three in one game and did nothing the rest of the year. Gutierrez had two, and then we had a couple guys get one. 
lot of deflections from a lot of different people. Forced fumbles, though. We only we had four forced fumbles here, and I think we only recovered two. And then we had two, four, six total defensive touchdowns. Four of five field goals on the year. We just weren't in range for Austin Anderson all that much. So hopefully with Avilas next year, we should kick more field goals instead of settling for punts. And speaking of punting, Matthew York had a decent year, averaging 40 yards a punt inside 28 different times. I felt like we kind of finally got the punting down towards the second half of the season. And that's going to do it here for season one of the Yellowstone Yams. Thank you guys so much for watching. We finished five and seven. Didn't quite make the postseason. I felt like that was like best case scenario, but I am very happy with the way it turned out. Next episode, we will go through uh, the entire offseason and get us ready for season two. And if you enjoyed this episode, leave a like and subscribe as we will catch you in the next one.